What's up guys, Frank Fulci back again, this time with one more of my special every horror movie I watched in videos, this month obviously being for February. So before we jump into all of this dopeness, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to get future notifications of uploads and updates. Um, let's do this guys, this is now I think my fifth video of this that I'm doing. Um, if you've watched the ones in the past, you know they're a little long-winded. They're a lot longer than my normal haul videos. So hopefully you stick with me here. You can watch it on 1.5 speed. You'll still get the gist of everything. Um, this one I don't suspect will be as long as usual because I didn't watch as many films. And now I always say that I feel like, but they are always still pretty long. But anyway, we'll go through this as quickly as we can with giving it still as much detail as we can. Uh, I've decided to do this looking like a wild Samoan wrestler here. Uh... But I uh, figured why not change things up a little bit. Anyway, guys, uh, you know, like I said, they're pretty long. So make sure you, sure you got a drink, a snack, whatever you need to get through this. And uh, let's jump into this. Actually, I'm going to start with a movie that I watched in January, but I was an idiot and forgot to include it in my video for the January haul or, uh, you know, movies watched. It was on the 31st that I watched it. It was a movie called Happy Times. It was from 2019, directed by Michael Mayer. Uh, if you guys see me looking down, obviously I'm looking at my laptop because I have my notes in front of me. But anyway, I watched this movie on Blu-ray from Art Exploitation Films. I actually did a full review of this so you can see or you can read the review on RepulsiveReviews.com. Um, I think I'm going to just put this hair up, guys. Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, you can read my full thoughts in the review, but just know that this movie was actually really fucking good. Uh, Artsploitation is kind of hit or miss with their movies, so if you guys don't know about Artsploitation films, they release a lot of stuff from a lot of foreign films, a lot of, there's very rarely ones that are like in English. This one happened to be actually in English and Hebrew, so multiple languages being spoken throughout, but um, really good. It's a black comedy basically, it's about this well-off family, this married couple, they have a mansion in like Beverly Hills, and they invite their friends and family over to have a dinner, a nice dinner. Uh, it doesn't turn out to be so nice because as the night goes on, um, there's a lot of tension between them. So there's cousins, there's friends, there's business owners. So when they start talking about business, there's a lot of tension there. It's like, oh, shut up, I don't want to deal with this crap. So there's a lot of undercutting of people who are supposed to be friends and people who are supposed to be trusting. So that kind of tension turns to an accidental death and then an accidental death turns into just all out chaos. And again, there's a lot of laughs in this and great acting iris bayer is one actress that i actually did recognize she's from curb your enthusiasm uh one of the main actresses she's actually on the cover of the film her name is laraz chamami i've never seen her before but she's incredible and she's fucking beautiful as well so that was an extra bonus for that movie but again definitely recommend that one and you guys could read my full review of course uh fast forward now getting actually into the february stuff on the fourth i watched a movie called mayhem Fantastic film from 2017, directed by Joe Lynch. I watched this on my 4K disc that I bought recently, uh, put out by RLJ Entertainment or RLJE. Now, if you guys don't know Joe Lynch, you're fucking up. Nah, he uh, has directed a bunch of movies. He's not really always a horror guy, but he's definitely a genre filmmaker. He does a lot of work with uh, Adam Green, of course. But uh, he's directed Everly, which is a fun, like, Kill Bill style action movie. Um, Wrong Turn 2, which is fucking awesome. Knights of Bad Aston, which I haven't seen yet, but Point Blank was another one that's like an action drama, crime thriller type of movie that is on Netflix, actually. I watched that recently. Uh, anyway, Mayhem is about... It's starring Steven Yeun and my favorite, Tamara Weaving. And uh, it's a, the first half of the movie is basically about Steven Yeun's character. He works in this big law firm consulting company and it first like 20 minutes or so of the movie are just kind of about how shitty the corp climbing the corporate ladder is uh, especially in this company that he works for and how it's changed him over time but a lot of backstabbing a lot of politics of course in that kind of company then what happens is a, a virus is on the loose here it's an id7 virus basically this virus they also call it the red eye virus uh makes all your inhibition drops all your inhibitions so things you wouldn't normally do in a public setting like jerking off on your boss's desk or punching your boss in the face or doing all sorts of crazy violent shit that those inhibitions are lowered and now you will do those things because of this virus uh so the office building's quarantined steven young's character 
decides this is a perfect time to get back at his bosses. He got fired over something. I don't want to give too many details away. Um, Samara Weaving's character, Melanie, is in the building because she tried to get some help from Steven Young's character and because he was going by the corporate rules, he was a dick to her. Anyway, she got kicked out, but they put her like in some prison type room whatever they kept her prisoner basically in the room but now the quarantine happened so she couldn't leave so now their characters samara weaving and steven yon's character steven yon is from walking dead by the way glenn uh he was fantastic in this movie but uh yeah their characters are basically working together now to get to the top floor to get to the the boss the big boss of the company to get revenge and it's fucking funny, it's violent, it's gory, it's awesome. Just watch this movie. I can't say anything bad. I don't know why I waited so long. I said it came out in 2017, and I love Joe Lynch's work. Uh, I don't know why I waited to see this. This is actually also on Shudder, so if you guys want to watch it on Shudder, you can do that as well. Uh, on the 5th, the next day, I watched a movie called Rubber. Yeah, from 2010, directed by Quentin Dupont. Du Dupieux, some French man. <laughs> Uh, I watched this on Blu-ray from Magnet Releasing. I did buy it recently from Amazon. You probably saw it on one of my hauls. Um, it was a pretty cheap copy of that movie, and I figured, let me just throw this shit on. Years ago, I skipped right over it, but I was like, let me have some silly fun. And silly fun is exactly what this is. It's kind of a meta movie in terms of they're filming a movie inside the movie. There's a group of tourists or watcher, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Just people wanting to watch some stupid shit. So they're watching uh this tire this killer tire going and killing people and you see the tire in the beginning realizing that it has a life and what it's doing and it's crunching over bottle caps and then it kills the little birds and animals and then it goes to killing people basically so it's a fun little fucking again not to be taken seriously in any way uh and think scanners with a tire so the head's exploding that's how it kills people uh just huge amounts of <laughs> exploding heads uh practical gore effects so it's really fucking good like everything about this movie is just a fun time so don't let it fool you like it did for me for so many years uh fast forward a couple days on the seventh i watched freaky which is a 2020 film directed by christopher landon i watched this on blu-ray i got a copy of it from universal pictures so you can read my full review of this one as well uh this was a fucking fantastic film I loved everything about this. I knew I was going to. Uh, Christopher Landon, if you guys don't know, he directed uh, Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to You. Uh, if you know just those films, you already got a good grasp on his style. But he's also directed Scout's Guide to Zombie Apocalypse. I believe he wrote and or directed Paranormal Activity, the marked ones. So that's like the only serious, serious film that I know of his that he's done. I know there's a couple others that I haven't seen some of his earlier work, but I love this man's style. Again, films that aren't supposed to be taken too seriously, just kick back and watch them, but they're done really well. Um, so yeah, again, you can read my full review, but Vince Vaughn is fantastic in this. Ah, uh, fuck, I didn't write the actress's name that's in this. Let me look it up for you real quick, just because I don't want you guys to go without knowing. Her name is Catherine Newton, and she's actually really fucking good. Uh, so they are the two that switch bodies. So it's basically a Freaky Friday situation. Uh, Catherine Newton's character and Vince Vaughn's character. Vince Vaughn is a slasher serial killer. Um, and they're, they flip bodies. So Vince Vaughn acting as a young girl in his body is fucking hilarious. As I thought it would be. And Catherine Newton's performance as the dual characters. Like of her as Millie in the beginning and then her as... Vince Vaughn inside of her body is fantastic transformation and she did both roles really well as did Vince Vaughn. So a slasher comedy basically. Fucking awesome. Uh, next up, fast forward a couple more days. On the 11th I watched a movie called Powerbomb. This was actually gifted to me by Mr. Fig Nasty. So shout out to the good brother there. Uh, the DVD was gifted to me I should say. It's a 2020 film which I didn't think. I thought it was a couple years older but uh, Indican Pictures is who put this out. Dual directors here are Zachary Childwachter, yeah, say that three times fast, and BJ uh, Colangelo. So these directors are known apparently on their DD, D uh, IMDb, it says that they've just directed a bunch of shorts and actually directed a segment in a film that I've been wanting to see, a horror anthology, a uh, Christmas anthology, Death December, which was technically made in 2019. I don't know if it's seen the light of day yet. Anyway, they've directed shorts and things like that. This was their first feature length. And it kind of shows. This is a movie that's about 
you know, independent wrestling and horror, but there's really not any horror and the wrestling scenes are kind of fucking not good. Like the quality of this film is not that great. The acting is okay. There's a lot of indie wrestlers that I've followed for years. Matt Cross, uh, Britt Baker is actually in this. She's pretty fucking good. Dick Justice is an indie wrestler that I've seen here and there. Adam Cole, who's a big time wrestler, actually has a little appearance in it. He's uh, going out with Britt Baker for many years. But uh, And Josh Miller plays, he's like the one non, I think that's the name of the guy. He's the one non wrestler in this movie. He plays Simon. So Simon is a huge fan of Matt Cross's character who plays Matt Cross uh, and he kidnaps him and he's trying to change his life in some way. Like, I don't even understand what this movie is supposed to be. The cover is a masked wrestler holding like a machete and there's that has nothing to do with the film in any way. Like that makes you think it's a like gory slasher wrestling movie and it's not that. Uh, I was very disappointed by this, but I was happy that uh, Schaefer, you know, Mr. Fignassi sent me the copy just so I could check it out. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I watched it. I'm glad I got to see it. But it did get me wanting to watch other horror wrestling films. And I know there are a few out there. I have a few in my Amazon wish list that I'm probably going to pick up pretty soon. And I want to kind of do a, a ranking video. Let me, get, you know, in the comments below, let me know if you guys want to see that. I kind of want to watch these wrestling horror movies and rank them. So I might make a video out of that if I do pick those up. But, yeah, this one would be at the bottom, I'm sure. So I don't really want to say anything else about that, but definitely skippable, by the way. Especially if you don't like wrestling, there's no nothing to hold you to that one. Anyway, on the 12th, the next day, I watched a movie called The Owners. Now, this is another 2020 film directed by Julius Berg. I watched this on Blu-ray from Image Entertainment. Entertainment. This one stars Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones. She plays Arya. If you guys don't know Game of Thrones, who are you? But if, you know, if you've never watched it, then you probably won't really know her from... Much of anything else, I think she was in that New Mutants movie that finally saw the light of day, which I still haven't seen, but uh, this movie was actually really fucking good too. So it reminded me of uh, Don't Breathe. It has like a home invasion reversal of roles type of vibe to it. So Maisie Williams' character and her boyfriend, he's like a scumbag. They're trying to, she gets dragged into it, but her boyfriend's trying to like make money real quick by robbing this rich couple, these older people, one's a doctor, uh, the, uh, his wife, I guess, used to be his nurse technically, but whatever. She's old and losing it. Anyway, they break into this uh, house, and it's the boyfriend and like two of his friends. Uh, and then, like I said, Maisie's character gets dragged into it, so it's for them. But they get in, they go in there to break in and like get into the safe that they know is there. And the couple comes home, and then just shit ensues. The couple ends up not being this nice old couple that you think it is. And I don't want to give too many details away, but it's pretty fucking crazy. It's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to like it just because it was getting a, po a lot of positive reviews. But uh, yeah, it was good. I would definitely recommend watching it. I think that's also on some sort of uh, streaming service. I don't know if it's on Hulu or I don't think it's on Shutter, but check Hulu. It might be on there. Uh, anyway, guys, on the next day, I watched a film called Random Acts of Violence from 2019. This was on Shutter and directed by Jay Baruchel, who is an actor. He's like a comedy actor. Uh, he's been in things like The End of the World, right? Is that the name of the movie with Seth Rogen in them? Uh, he uh, has been in a bunch of comedies. He's like, I've seen him throughout the years in just random roles like that. It's that really skinny dude. Anyway, if you look him up, you'll know who I'm talking about. But he directed this film, so I was like really excited to see this. There's a lot of these comedians getting into horror and shit. So this one had its, you know, comedy moments, but it was otherwise played as a pretty straightforward horror movie. And it's about uh, this comic book writer played by Jesse Williams, who I know from Cabin in the Woods. He's been in a couple other things, but he's a comic book writer who writes a comic called Slasher Man. And it's apparently this comic is based on a killer called I-90 Killer, like a real life killer who just killed a bunch of people up and down I-90 uh, Highway. So, and his wife, is, or his girlfriend rather, is played by Jordana Brewster, who's been in a bunch of things over the years as well. But she's also like a writer. She's writing a book about the victims of the real life killer. So their works, their bodies of work are kind of connected in that way. But they go on this field trip, you know, this road trip to, I guess, New York. They're trying to go to like, they go and they're making stops to, uh, you know, radio interviews and things like that along the way. And she's just interviewing, uh, victims but anyway as they're on this road trip i don't know if they're actually going to new york they're going someplace far away from them they're in canada um but uh as they're on their w road trip there's a lot of murders going on and the murders 
the victims are being left in configurations that are only in have only been seen in the comic books so somebody is recreating the killings that are in the comics but the comics are recreating killings that were based off of real killings kind of a weird little cycle there but it makes sense when you watch it and it's really good it wasn't as good as i wanted it to be like the ending was a little odd and there were some things that i was like mm, i would have done that differently but Overall, still a good watch. I do want to get the Blu-ray of this eventually. I know Shudder, thank God, unlike other streaming services, Shudder actually puts out their movies on fucking physical media. So I just showed a bunch in my latest haul video, which should be coming today. I'm filming this on Sunday. I filmed that one yesterday, so it should be uploaded in about an hour from now. But this video that you're watching now will probably be on Wednesday. So anyway, in my Sunday haul, I showed a bunch of Shudder fucking releases. That's the story I'm trying to tell there. Anyway, this one is really good, like I said. So, fast forward now, another day. On the 14th, which is Valentine's Day, of course, I had to watch the original My Bloody Valentine. You guys know that's from 1981, directed by George Mahalka. I watched this on the Scream Factory Blu-ray. Uh, not much has to be said about this. This is great. I watched the unrated cut just because that is by far the superior cut of the film. A lot of the gore is thrown back in. Apparently, according to George, it's not all of the gore that he intended to be in the film. I think some of that footage is just lost forever. But uh, he has like a little intro in the beginning of the Blu-ray and uh, he says like this is as complete as you're going to see it basically. So he was happy with it. But awesome film. It's about a decades old story of a miner who was left under the mine in the mines and he goes crazy because he has to he basically turns into a cannibal and eats his, his fellow miners that got stuck down there with him to survive. He comes out and he kills people on Valentine's Day, basically. Some decades later, there's a Valentine's dance in town and uh, still a mining town. And all the miners and them are going to this dance, but the dance is canceled because he's starting to murder again. Obviously, it's a slasher film, so you know the twist is it's not really Harry Warden, who was the original killer, so you gotta watch and see. But it's really good. Like I said, the unrated cut is definitely the one you wanna watch here. Um, but again, not much needs to be said. That is definitely a classic in terms of slasher films. On that day, of course, I was able to squeeze a second one in, and it had to be not the remake, but the 2001 film called Valentine. Uh, this one was directed by Jamie Blanks, I believe his name is. I wrote that here, but I don't know if that's actually what it is. I don't know if it was Blanks or Blank. <clears throat> yes, Jamie Blanks. Well, I'm a dummy and I knew that was right. But anyway, I always second guess myself on camera. So Jamie Blanks is the director. I said it was from 2001. I watched this also on the Screen Factory Blu-ray. Uh, Jamie Blanks now is, he's directed Urban Legends. So he was no, uh, he directed that three years prior. He's no stranger to slasher films, especially these slasher films that star these beautiful young cast, right? These are the, this was the 90s, early 2000s style of slasher films, which, to me, it's still fucking fun. Like the I Know What You Did Last Summers and the, you know, films like that. I, and Scream, of course, Scream being the better ones, but I enjoy all those type of films for what they are. They're, they hold a special place in my heart. Of course, I grew, you know, I was a teenager when these things were coming out. And uh, I think Valentine still holds up. Now it's kind of ahead of its time in a lot of ways where the main cast, there wasn't just one final girl. Like the entire main cast is made up of all females. Denise Richards is one of them, a bunch of other, stunningly beautiful actresses and they're very very talented as well david boreanis is in this he plays one of their boyfriends so katherine heigl is in this briefly in the beginning uh a lot of familiar faces a lot of like i said good looking people for the casting of course um but it's just really good fun slasher film uh it's more of a typical background where uh, this kid was bullied in high school and he ends up now they're getting Valentine's notes and chocolates filled with maggots and things like this. And the, the initials on there are the, could be the initials of the killer from high school or from the kid from high school that they bullied. So typical slasher type background story, but again, cool kills, inventive kills, and just watching the special behind the scenes, like interviews on the, on the Blu-ray itself, it seems like every single person has just a positive thing to say about the filming of it, the environment, you know, around the filming. And the director himself, Jamie Blanks, everyone just loves him and just at this many years later still remembers just fondly working on this film. So to me, that just makes it that much even better, like more enjoyable of a film, just because you know that everyone really was all in on making this film as good as they could. You know, maybe some people think it's a little silly. Like I said, 2001 slasher, not the best time for slasher films, but like I said, I enjoyed it. So I definitely recommend it if you guys haven't seen it already. Um, fast forward, guys, on the 18th, I watched a another slasher film called teacher shortage this was another 2020 film directed by troy escamilla i had the blu-ray this because i contributed to a crowdfunding 
uh, campaign that happened, I feel like this shit was going on like two years ago. It took forever for this to be a thing. And I remember like seeing posts on Troy's like Instagram, like, ah, oh, shipping out DVDs, shipping out Blu-rays. I'm like, dude, am I ever, I didn't even get any notification this shit was available. Like it was, I kept, every couple weeks I was like messaging him like, hey, you gonna ship mine? Like, anyway, it ended up coming. I waited a little bit and I ended up watching it again. Finally, obviously on this day, the 18th, like I said, and it was all right. He, this director also did a, another indie low budget slasher called Mrs. Claus. I think I did a full review of that. Obviously a killer Mrs. Claus running around. So a hollow, you know, a, a, a Christmas horror slasher. But that one was pretty good. I enjoyed it for what it was. And that's why I wanted to uh, contribute to this crowdfunding for this other movie. And this one was all right. The acting is kind of what you expected. Uh, gay characters as the main character. So he's a little, uh, he's trying to be more diverse, to show more diversity than most horror films, I would say. I mean, I guess in this day and age, 2021, there's a lot more of that going on, but it was nice to see that. Like I said, diversity in the casting and things like that and the characters themselves. But it's a slasher film, so basically it's teacher shortage. So what happens is teachers just start getting picked off one by one. I don't really want to ruin it too much, but I do want to recommend watching it. Again, practical effects, but really low budget. So some of them look good, some of them don't look not as good. But again, overall, I'm happy that I own it. I'm happy that I contributed to it. And I'm happy to see, I believe he's working on a Mrs. Claus too. So that's really cool because I'm always all for slasher sequels of course so uh on to the next one guys on the 19th i watched funny games the original german version from 1997 i watched this on my criterion collection blu-ray this was directed by michael haneke or haneke um i have never seen this film these um, all these are fucking first time watches for me basically yeah if i unless i said otherwise no nah, these are oh not my buddy valentine or valentine but uh anyway first time watching this i remember watching like 10 minutes of the original of the remake rather years ago and i turned it off i was like ah, i'm not in the mood for this shit because it starts off kind of slow same with this but basically if you haven't seen funny games what it is is it's another like home invasion type thing but <sighs> done really fucking well the acting is good i don't know any of the actors again it's a foreign film but oh man no holds bar on this one like violence towards children violence towards men and women like this family is at their house, this nice like lake house. Uh, again, a wealthy family. And these two kids, these two guys, golfers, dressed in all white, show up to their house and first they're just asking for eggs and then it leads to all sorts of other crazy shit. And the tension builds and they basically hold this family hostage and torture them and play games with them, funny games. Uh, and it's fucking brutal and unrelenting. So uh, definitely you need to watch that. I wanna see the remake now because I wanna see if they went in the same route. You know, if they, they really just follow the whole thing, you know, is it a shot for shot remake? Did they change something? So it'd be interesting to see that. So I do want to check that out. Uh, and let me know in the comments below if you have seen the remake and what, how does it compare to the original, of course. Everyone says remakes suck, I, I get it. But barring that, let your opinion be, you know, tell me the truth. Um, so yeah, that was on the 19th. All right, guys, moving right along here on the 20th. We're almost done here. There's a few more movies on the 20th. Now, this is interesting. 20th, me and my friend, we hung out for the first time in a while, and we did a Samara Weaving Marathon Day. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen those posts, but I'll get to that in a second. First up, I watched one that I hadn't seen of hers called Bad Girl. This film's from 2016. This was directed by Finn Edquist, and we watched this on Amazon Prime. Now, it wasn't uh, a free movie to watch on Prime streaming, uh, but I had digital credits, so it was free for me, basically. Um, so Samara Weaving's character is named Chloe, or Jessica. Uh, so there's another girl, I think her name is Amy in this, and she's kind of known as a bad girl. She's adopted, and she's living with her parents, and they don't really get along too much. She's kind of misunderstood, and she's been in trouble. They picked her up from, like prison or jail or juvenile delinquent center or something she was in trouble when they picked her up in the beginning of the film and she's still trying to find a way she wants to run away she meets Samara Weaving's character who claims to be this Chloe person who lives up the street she's a child of the neighbors let's say so another movie that has a well-off family their huge house big land all this stuff so Amy and Chloe Chloe get closer and they start getting into trouble and they steal a car and this that, and the other thing and then as we learn 
more and more about Samara Weaving's character. We know that she, we learn that she's not who she says, who she says she is, basically. Uh, I heard, this is another one that I heard of from uh, Mr. Fig Nasty. And he says he didn't like this movie that much. I, so I expected that it wasn't going to be that good. I wanted to watch it just because of Samara Weaving and, it, you know, I hadn't seen it before. But I thought it was actually better than uh, I anticipated. Uh, I thought it was just going to be kind of a weird suspense thriller. But the ending of this film is pretty fucking brutal. Uh, it was highly unexpected. And I thought it made the movie that much better. So And Samara Weaving, once she gets into her craziness of what her character actually is, she does really fucking good. This is the only movie that I've seen that she has her actual Australian accent. Um, so that was nice to see too. So yeah, I recommend watching this at least once. Again, not as great as her other films, but uh, next on that same day, in part of our marathon, we watched Guns Akimbo, which I had seen. Now, this one's not really a horror movie, so I won't talk about it too much, but I'll say it's from 2019, directed by Jason Lee Howden, and we watched this on Blu-ray that I brought over to the house. This was put out by Lionsgate. The director of this, um, also did Deathgasm, which is a horror film, a horror comedy, uh, which is great, if, especially if you love metal. But Guns Akimbo is basically, again, don't want to talk too much about it because then people are going to say, it's not a horror movie, why the fuck are you talking about it? It's uh, basically Death Race mixed with Battle Royale. It's an action, shoot 'em up bloody fucking good time. Uh, Samara Weaving's character is named Nyx, and she has a tattoo over her eyebrow, and she's all fucking tatted up, and she's a badass, and she's fucking awesome. Just like she's in every other movie, so that's all I'll say about that. Uh, also stars fucking Harry Potter himself, Daniel Radcliffe. Great fucking movie, guys. Definitely watch it. Uh, and we also watched Mayhem. Yes, I watched Mayhem twice in one month. It's that fucking good. So like I said earlier, 2017 Joe Lynch. This time I watched it on the Blu-ray disc that came with the 4K set. Uh, because my friend hadn't seen it. Fucking loved it. I already talked about the movie, so I don't need to talk about it anymore. Now, the last movie to talk about for this month was actually watched last night on the 27th. The Nightingale. Oh my god, this movie is from 2020, directed by Jess Jessica, wow, Jennifer Kent, uh, on Blu-ray, I watched this, the Blu-ray from Second Sight Films, which is that awesome big limited edition box set, uh, Jennifer Kent directed, uh, The Babadook, which I fucking hated, um, I don't know why everyone loves that film so much, but, uh, yeah, I watched it, and I don't remember anything about it because it was years ago, but I do remember fucking loathing it immensely, and I think I'm in the minority on that one, but anyway, uh, The Nightingale is fucking fantastic. Now, I heard good things about it, but I also heard good things about Babadook, so I didn't think I was gonna like this one. This movie is fucking brilliant. Um... The long and short of it is, is a revenge movie. Now, I've seen every revenge movie there is to see under the sun. From indie garbage movies made in the backyard to fucking blockbuster to classics to everything in between. Um, I fucking love revenge films and I, like I said, I think I've seen anything that's worth mentioning, to, you know, in that subgenre. But The Nightingale is one that I've never seen before. Now, somebody had left a comment on my Instagram post about this saying, ah, oh, you know, it's been done to before. I highly disagree. I don't think this has been done ever. This is a period piece. It's in English, but there's also a lot of Gaelic being spoken throughout. There's another language, like an Afrikaans type uh, language. Uh, it's fucking beautiful. Now, there's duality here because this movie is brutal. It's unrelenting. There is no... Uh, she does not pull punches. She... Jennifer Kent goes all in on the brutality of this. This is a rape revenge, but there's more to it. There's more to the original trauma that causes the revenge to want to take place. Uh, I won't say anything about it, but again, it's fucking brutal. On the flip side of that brutality, though, is there's so much beauty in this film, and I'm not even talking about just cinematography. I'm talking about the singing that uh, the main actress does, and then uh, the black tracker, the black boy that she has with her, Billy, later on. Uh, he does singing in his native language. I mean, there's so much beauty in this that it's fucking... It's crazy. Like I said, there's so much shock and there's so many moments they're like oh fuck did they just do that and then there's this beauty in it and there's beauty in the relationship of claire and billy towards the end of the film and there's just so much going on here this movie is long as shit it's like two hours and 20 minutes and again normally that would just bother me it would just piss me off and i would be angry that i've sat through this but everything i loved it i don't know maybe it was just the mood i was in last night like maybe if i caught this on a different day it would have rubbed me you know a completely different way but 
I absolutely love this film. I cannot say enough good things about it. If you haven't, I know a lot of people have seen it already. And again, a lot of people are saying good things, but I'm not hearing too much detail about those good things. And I think it needs to be spoken about a lot more. So if you guys have not seen The Nightingale, you should fucking do it. And if you have seen it, let me know in the comments below. Maybe I am overhyping it, but again, I expect it to not like this at all. And if I did, I was like, eh, maybe it'll be okay. No, I absolutely love this. I want to dive deeper into the interviews. I watched one of the interviews with the main actress who played Claire last night as a special feature, but it was late because I said the long ass movie. So I didn't watch any more, but I do want to jump into more of the special features for sure. And uh, yeah, again, can't say enough good things about that fucking awesome film. Um, so that is it, guys. This one is actually shorter than most of the videos I've done in this vein. And uh, hopefully you stuck with me to the end. And if you have, I appreciate it. So thank you. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below if you've seen any of these movies, if you haven't, if you plan on watching them now that I've spoken about them. And uh, yeah, what did you watch in this month, of course? And did we watch anything the same? So on and so forth, of course, guys. You know, you can comment anything you'd like, and I always respond in a timely manner. And if you'd like to support the channel anyway, of course, there's links down below. I will put the review links that I mentioned down below. I'll also put, I'll try to find all these things on Amazon in case you want to buy a copy. I'll put an Amazon link down below. Now it is part of my affiliate program. If you buy through the link, I'll get a penny or two, nothing crazy. And I think I'm losing money being an affiliate because no one ever uses my links. So I don't know if there's some fee that I'm paying. I get emails and I never understand what the fuck they're saying, but it's basically an Amazon fee. It looks like that I'm paying for these to be an affiliate because I never am in the black here. I'm never making money on this. So Ramble cut short. If you want to buy anything through those links, I'll have them down below. Uh, I'll have my Amazon wishlist down below and all sorts of other things. Hopefully you guys have checked out my latest haul video, which will be up in about 15 minutes of me filming this. But I said, this will probably be up on a Wednesday night, this video. So you'll have already seen that. Anyway, make sure you comment and like that video as well. Again, like I mentioned in the beginning, if you're not a subscriber and you like what you saw here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And uh, until next time, guys, I hope everyone's doing well and is safe and healthy and all those good things. Peace out and be good.